Uh, hello, Tokyo. I, today I'm talking about my, my startup story. Uh, the organizers told me that there is a lot of early stage startup here, so that uh, my story of finding Google Van and getting into several countries would be quite interesting to the audience. That's why uh, today I'm going to talk about a lot of my background and the finding story of my company instead of the business model of, of Google Van. But just FYI, Google Van is a sharing economy platform for logistics. We match drivers and customers, which is mostly business, to move their goods. We have motorcycle, van, and truck, as you see on the screen. We are operating in Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and now over 170 cities in China right now. On our platform, over 2 million drivers are actively working on our platform. But today, as the, as the MC said, I'm a high school dropout. I dropped out from Hong Kong High School in 2005. And then I got a one-way ticket to California to continue my, my, my life. My dad um, spent all his living to buy a one-way ticket for me to go to California. And then by the time that I arrived in California, by October 2005, there was no school took me in. And then I, the first thing I need to do is to find a Chinese restaurant to work and start to make a living. So today my story is going to tell you anyone here, no matter what kind of background you are, you can start a business. The company that you see on the screen called Google Van is a company I found with only 250,000 yen. A lot, lot of money, only with 250,000 yen. And then we became the first unicorn company from Hong Kong, and they're operating in several countries. I've never written any mobile application. I'm not from a com computer science background. And I'm also not from a rich family. I screwed up my public exam when I was in high school in Hong Kong. That's why I need to drop out. Okay? With that background, I got a chance to do something very interesting. I passionate about and then let myself here on this stage to talk to you guys in Tokyo. When I started the company, I've never expected I can be in Tokyo to talk with you guys and share my story. If anyone asks me, I don't think my story worth to be shared when I was like five years ago, I'm just a low body, just like you guys may be sitting down there as an audience. But now I guess I have a lot of fascinating experience that I can share with you how we started the company and how it's scaling up. And then it took one simple concept from Hong Kong, which most of the VC, most of the investor, think a company from Hong Kong is not going to win the Southeast Asia market. And the team from Hong Kong won't understand the Chinese market. But we tackled that kind of challenge years over years and proven myself and our team that we can do it. You don't need a master degree or anything to do business. But with dedications and passions, just trying to solve the problems by yourself every single day, find good team member, that you can do it. That is the background of my sharing. So I was saying that I have a high school job out. By the time I was in California, I made every single penny in school and the Chinese restaurant to pay off all my tuition. So my dad, after he bought a one-way ticket for me to California, I started making money on my own. How did I do it? Other than be a, de being a delivery guy for a Chinese restaurant, I sell a lot of stuff on eBay. I used to fix a lot of bicycle and then trade online on eBay and then sell it to my classmates because we have a lot of international students. And then every time that when I saw some new international student moving in and then I would go to their apartment, hey, do you need a bicycle go to school? Okay, I have a lot. Okay, how about I sell it to you like 20 bucks or 30 bucks with insurance. If anything wrong with your bike, you can come to me, I fix it for you. Okay, how I do it, I did not have a lot of skills just because I ride a bicycle to school and work every single day and I broke a lot of bicycle. And then how I fix it is I went to Walmart, okay? Walmart is still quite big back at those days, 2005 and 2006. And then I will buy a new bicycle, take it out, and then take the new parts to fix my bike and then return the bike to Walmart. 
Well, you need to survive, right? That's what you keep thinking how to make money and how to be surviving. And then I use the same concept. I start to trade second-hand car on Craigslist and eBay. I would buy a second-hand car like Toyota. You know, uh, Toyota is very, very sturdy and can run for forever, right? A lot of Toyota Camry, Honda Civic, all this type of vehicle. And then most of my, my, my friends, they love uh, this type. But when they have problems, when I bought them, I learned how to fix it by just asking a great teacher of ours. His name is called Google and YouTube. Just ask how to fix a car. They have YouTube video tell you how to fix it, where to buy the parts, which is on eBay. And then you just build it step by step, fix the car, and then I sell it, we sell it to, to my friends and, and, and classmates. That's how I start to make some money to go to school. And then after two years in California, I need to transfer to a four-year college, which I applied for UC Berkeley Business School. And then the out-of-state tuition for California like university is very, very expensive. All the money that I made is not enough for me to pay for school. Then what I did is by 2017, uh, 2007, Steve Jobs got this iPhone, the first generation. And when everyone no matter on Boomer, on New York, uh, New York Times, wherever, all these publications saying that Steve Jobs was insane. Who would sell a phone without button, without keyboard? No one is going to buy it. But nowadays, when we look at our phone, which phone have button on it? Okay, my phone is like iPhone 10, no more button anymore. It's just, just wipe up, right? So in just 10 years, a lot of stuff changed. And then what I did with the iPhone is I was the first group of seller unlock it and jailbroken the phone and put it on eBay to sell it to the world. And then I made several hundred thousand US dollars so that I can go to school. That was me. That was my, 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 my very entrepreneurial background. I'm not a very, very smart guy that I, I, am, I don't know how to do computer science program, anything. I'm just a typical guy, but the environment forced me to do something very, very interesting so that I can survive. And the same concept, actually, we can put it in any startup. When you start your company, just like my company, with 250,000 yen, what kind of things that you can do? I'm not a guy that know how to program, I told you. So the first question is not about money. If I know there's a question, it's a problem that I want to solve, you just need to take it to a logical step how to solve that questions or problems. The first problem that we want to solve is there's a delivery problem in Hong Kong. We have a lot of call centers and a lot of vehicles on the street, which is the truck and van that you see on the screen. And then most of these vehicles and drivers working with call centers to get business. And then before I find a Google van, I started another company called Boss Ad, advertisement on a bus. What is that company do is we put advertisement on a takeaway box, on top of the box. Only the box and no food inside, right? Okay, it's, not, it's similar to the bento in, in, in Japan, but without the food inside. So we run that company, uh, very, very successful. Within nine months of time, over 600 restaurants were using our bosses. And then we have been having a lot more uh, credible advertiser to put advertisement on our bosses. And then that is where we try to scaling up the, the boss ad company. But we find a great problem for us to make this company great. It's the delivery problem. Every day we spend hours and hours to call the call center to our ring truck and drivers to help us to do delivery. And then after nine months of time running the, the, the business, the scale is big enough every day we were delivering over 100,000 buses per day to over 600 restaurants. So either we are going to build our own logistic fleet or we have to hire a lot of part-time or, or regular drivers that to serve us every day. Then we call this call center to arrange all this vehicle, the, the capacity, and I find out there's a pain in the, uh, there's a huge pain point that this industry is exactly like the taxi industry, like five years ago, 10 years ago. They have their small group, small company to operate under one radio channel. And then after a while, the radio frequency, the, the call center couldn't solve our problems. Then we started to think how we build our own sharing network of drivers. 
And then we started to put all our drivers that we know, put their phone number into our WhatsApp group. And then we start to WhatsApp the drivers every day on our delivery schedule. And then over time, we have a lot of WhatsApp group, and then it become a very chaotic problem is because how to manage all this WhatsApp group is a l very time consuming, it's not very, very effective. And then that's how we led to a, a, a question, how can we solve the problems of getting a driver with multiple WhatsApp group? That, the answer is one gigantic WhatsApp group. But at that time, one group can only allow like 10 people, 20 people in one group. We cannot change WhatsApp because of our need then we can only solve it. Then it led to the idea of how about we building our own platform. Then we spent years and uh, months and months to understand the market. And then we started in 2013, July in Hong Kong, by just getting 300 drivers on board to use our app. The question behind at this stage is how we get a very, very good technical guy to build a very, very sexy, functional mobile application platform for us to use. And then, that is one of the core ideas that I want to share with you. As an entrepreneur, your job is to solve problems. When there's a resources problem, you solve, you solve the problems of getting resources. If you don't have the skills to build whatever you need, accounting, finance, okay, product, engineering, then your job is to get the right person, right people to do it with you, not for you when you are in early stage. Because if you just hire people or getting people to do it for you, then your journey may not be last that long. Because everyone has an objective, and your objective is to ask someone to help you out, that's it. In the early stage, all you need to get a partner that willing to go through the ups and downs with you. I was very lucky enough, I got five co-founders, including myself, and each of us have different skills. At that time, we, we don't talk about market shares, we don't talk about how much shares you own, how much share I own, what's the obligation, responsibility. All we did is to set a goal, an objective. Uh, we agree that it's ver something very sexy, very good that we should achieve. And we think it's very interesting we, if we can solve that problem. And then all the co-founders think, yeah, I think it's very, very uh, uh, good idea, and then let's try. And then at that time, our objective for ourselves is within one year being the largest platform in Hong Kong only, and then we can generate enough revenue and income so that five of us can make a little bit money to pay or give it back to our family, our parents to sh kind of shut their mouth off. Okay, I have a job. Okay, don't ask me what I do. Okay, and then every day. I just hide in the office to pay PlayStation, Xbox, whatever, Monster Hunter, right, recently. So that's my goal. And that was me. And that's surprisingly, the company has been doing really well because we solved the right problem, right ping pong that only, not only myself experienced it, a lot of people have the same ping pong in the industry with the logistic industry. So we started scaling up the company. First of all, I told you I share, we started with 250,000 yen. And then when we raised our first Series A run, it was a really painful process. And the progress is actually similar to when I applied for university. You just keep talking to people. You keep applying until one silly guy or crazy guy silly enough to believe in you. I guess that is the mentality every entrepreneur has to keep in mind. When it's an early stage, it's extremely hard. But if it's not extremely hard, that entrepreneurial journey is not that meaningful, in my point of view. Because you got all the help from the beginning. What is the fun part of doing business? The fun part of business is you keep building, building, building with your t team. If you're a team that you love working together, you don't mind working for 24 hours without sniff with this team. You put yourself like you are the Michael Jordan in this team, but all the other guys are the Michael Jordan in their own field. What can be more exciting than that? You get to handpick which Michael Jordan to work with you and to fight the war together. To me, that is why being an entrepreneur is so, so, so interesting. But we couldn't raise a lot of money in Hong Kong. We have to w run into a lot of... Uh, 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 
institutional investor, and then they said well, our ideas were kind of stupid. It's only work in Hong Kong, and then we took it to Singapore and we proved it, and we raised Series A from Singapore, and then for us to launch in Southeast Asia. Later on, we expand our model to China and, and other places, and then last year we did a one of the largest merger in the uh, startup history in Hong Kong. We merged with a Chinese-based uh, sharing platform uh, a company called uh, Wuba Su Yun, 58 Transportation in English. And then that was a leap of faith for myself. A lot of people ask me, especially my friend in Southeast Asia, ask me, hey, Stephen, why don't you keep building by yourself? And you have to work with this uh, 58 Transportation. I said, they are the leader in China, and we are building up our market share in China. There's a one philosophy one of our shareholder or director taught me. When we are a startup, very small startup, if you want to win the war, but not every single battle, you have to learn how to build or buy. If you have the capacity and the resources, you can decide you, what you, you build it. But if you don't have it, how can you leverage your connection, relationship? and buy whatever that you need so that it become a bigger animal to do much more for your company, to win it big and fast. A lot of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs also share the same view, okay, how to build a company fast enough to escape the velocity of the, of the traditional startup or other companies. Then we, we, we chose to do it. And at that time, our competitor, 50 Day Transportation in China, they are operating more than 60 to 70 cities in China already. And we were only in eight. And they, were, they, they, they love our team, they like our team, because we have been put up in some good fight. And our team, the execution is very, very good. So when you're scaling up the company, no matter what kind of resources that you have, the key is about your execution. If you have $1, what is the $1 execution plan? Comparing to 100 million execution plan, if your ROI on $1 compared to a 100 million one, it's much, much more effective. You will still able to grab some market share and sustain your business. All you need to do is to make sure your burn rate, your cost structure is much more healthy than the larger competitors. Then we can put up a fight. We raised a 6.5 million Series A, but our competitor at that time raised 300 million for their Series A. A lot of us uh, always entrepreneurs always believe we are all very positive. We are all always uh, uh, optimistic about the future. And we are always thinking that David and Goliath uh, case that we will win the game. We are the, the champion at the end. But facing market like China is not something that is all about your, your, your intellectual ability or your team. It's also about the execution speed and the resources that you have. By leveraging these competitive resources, and they're willing, work, willing, work, uh, willing to work with us, then that makes things very, very interesting. And then we took that leap of faith to merge with them, became a unicorn company. And then since then, we were operating in, in 70 cities in China. Now, in just nine months of time, we are operating in 170 cities in China. That is the power of this leverage. And at the same time, as an entrepreneur and the founder of the company, I gave up something, but in exchange, I own a bigger pie, bigger opportunity to build and to achieve my vision. So th th that was my background and how I, s I started the company, how I built it over the years. I have a lot of interesting story. When we were in Singapore, I hired the taxi driver who drove me around to be my first team member for Singapore as the operation manager. And then I hired a ex-IBM executive to have like a 90% pay cut to join us in South Korea. All these stories are very, very interesting. If you want to start your company or want in your company, raising angel run Series A is one of the stage. As soon as you decide you want to build a company, that's a good start. Don't stop. Keep fighting. My little story hope to inspire some ideas on your mind and keep you moving, motivate you in the future. Japan is a great market. Service Asia is also a great market. The future is full of possibilities. It's all rely on how we want to do it. Don't complain. I started with a very little amount of money. If we, I, I, I complain the amount of money that I had to, to run the company, I guess I probably won't be here today. 
But anyway, the story and the resources don't limit us what we should achieve in the future. And I want to take Google Van here in, in Japan very soon and so that you guys can enjoy our service here and achieve a greater height and share much more story next time I see you guys on the stage. Thank you. Thank you.